Hi, and welcome to Experience Week. We are excited to have you with us today. This presentation is called Leveraging Journey Analytics to Deliver Superior Customer Experience by Maxence van Kauenberger. Before we jump into content, some quick housekeeping items. First, feel free to share this event with your colleagues. It's not too late to register. Second, let others know you're watching by tweeting at Qualtrics with hashtag Experience Week. And third, all content from today is available on demand, so enjoy. The time is now yours, Maxence. Thank you um, for having me uh, today. Uh, today I'm going to speak about journey analytics, which is uh, an analytics domain that was created about three to five years ago and which deals with customer journeys and how to make them better, leveraging the latest data and analytics techniques. Uh, I will go quickly through uh, the customer journeys and what they are, how we, do we define them, and then I will spend time to speak about how journey analytics helps you accelerate customer experience transformations. I will give a couple of concrete examples of how it's actually been used, and I will go into the details of some analysis that help uncover insights and helps you uh, capture that value, and then I will spend a bit of time going through uh, capabilities, like how to build a journey analytics capability and the kind of challenge that we see organizations face. Uh, we do that. Uh, before going into the journey analytics space, so um, you, you guys are all working into the area of customer experience. So I'm pretty sure you have heard about customer journeys. This is uh, it has become a bit of a buzzword in the industry, uh, and I'm sure you guys speak to speak to the word or hear about it a uh, hundred times every day. But um, wanting to ground it and uh, make sure we are uh, speaking on the same the same thing. So uh, we we define customer journeys as the set of interactions that customers are having with the company, with your company, uh, every time they, get, they basically want to get anything done. And um, it usually starts with the customers having a need. Uh, it finishes with that need being fulfilled. And it can include anything from uh, the customer wanting to solve a problem or the customer wanting to buy a product, the customer wanting to change an account, uh, things of that nature. Uh, it's uh, by design channel agnostic, meaning that the customers can perform these activities in any of the uh, web, uh, non-digital, phone, point of sale uh, channels, and it can be and usually involve some omni-channel interactions, meaning customers that actually go through different channels to get, the, to, to get that thing done. Uh, it's a concept that has been created about um, three years ago. Actually, McKinsey, uh, my colleagues from the customer experience practice, have written uh, a few uh, white papers and articles around the concept uh, back in 2012. Uh, and as a concept that was created, I uh, find it's very powerful to help companies improve on, on their customer experience. And here is why, as, as a quick summary. Uh, the, first w the first reason why is um, uh, we think about these customer journeys as being omnichannel because, well, it's as simple as the world is not single channel anymore. Uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you had the customer interaction happening in, you know, usually across one channel, uh, either a point of sale or uh, a phone channel, and you could actually complete the entire transaction there. And so you, could, you, you, you were, companies were in control of the interaction with the customers, which is, which is not the case anymore. Uh, customers, and uh, you know, more recently in the past five years, I would say, with the emergence of, of mobile as you know, new channels and new technologies are interacting with you across uh, you know, two, three, four, five, ten channels, and that became a lot more complicated to do. So the, the concept of drone helps harness a bit this different interaction into a, a single framework. The second reason is, uh, is very simple. It's just it's, um, it's the way customers think about um, uh, uh, the services you offer them and think about how they interact with you companies. They don't think about one interaction in one channel. Like they don't think about a phone call. They don't think about uh, a, web, a web session. They think about that thing they want to get done, you usually want to do it in the most effective way. And so thinking about journeys is, is, uh, is flipping a bit the, uh, the view from uh, uh, an organization back, uh, usually silo back uh, view of the world to a customer centric view of the world. Uh, the third reason is um, we found over time that looking at uh, journeys across the, all these interactions helps uh, reveal what we call blind spots. Blind spots being pain points, uh, transfer points between these different channels that you just don't see if we, if we focus on, on one of these interactions and you start to see if you to piece together how customers are going from one channel to the other to get, to get their 
to get their service or, or products. Uh, and and that's, that's, that's actually reflected in the numbers. If you look at satisfaction from customers channel by channel, you usually find very high scores, 90%, 95% or, or more. But then if you start to look at journeys, uh, customer satisfaction tend to go down because customers either remember or the fact that they have to go through multi-channels uh, make their experience worse. And so you have scores that are much more in the, in the 80%, 70%, 60% uh, range, and you actually have opportunities to make the, the experience better. And the two other points are, from, a, from an analytics standpoint, we found that looking at journeys add predictive power to uh, uh, the way you handle the experience, meaning the, the set of interactions that customers has, have had in the past helps you forecast the set of interaction the customers are going to have in the future, uh, either like micro interaction that the next, you know, the real next 24 hours, but also like a, at the life cycle uh, level, it helps you understand if customers are trending upwards, downwards in terms of value created, and as a result of that, helps you uh, define strategies to interact with your customers on a one-to-one -one basis that helps you maximize the journey. So very powerful uh, predictor. And last, we found it's also a a framework, a way to, to look at things that helps align the entire organization, your organization, uh, on how to handle how to handle these, these interactions and how to improve the experience uh, uh, across many, many different silos. So it's a very powerful concept. Then in our experience, what we see is that um, looking at customer journeys and applying analytics to, to them has a lot of business impact potential. The first Area, uh, and that's the area we are all here to speak about most, is uh, the customer experience and the, the customer satisfaction levels. Uh, we found that by applying analytics to uh, to this domain, we can generate anywhere between 20 to uh, 35, 40 points of additional NPS because we are able to essentially surface the pain points, uh, size the innovations, and track the journeys in a way that helps you. Uh, uncover and allocate your resources to the highest return points and drive uh, design, you know, journey design and improvement that are much more, much more effective. So a lot of uh, NPS potential there, but also if you look at the uh, journeys more broadly, you can also uh, generate value across three other areas. Uh, the first one is a cost to serve. Uh, what we find is that when you start to understand how customers are interacting with you and their behaviors, their preferences, you can start designing the, um, the interaction system, if you wish, much more effectively and uh, nudge customers, develop services that make the, um, uh, the delivery of these services cost effective because you can cut calls or point of sale or any high cost interaction that is not needed and can be replaced uh, successfully with better experience with more self-serve models and target your customers in a way that nudges them to, uh, to a better, uh, you know, more, more cost-effective model. We, we found we find anywhere between 10 and 25% of cost reduction potential when you start looking at journeys. And the two others are uh, sales. So uh, purchasing journeys are also omnichannel journeys and also journeys that can optimize to improve the conversion by better allocating your marketing dollars where you have either leakage points or uh, acceleration, conversion acceleration points. So your web to point of sale connections or marketing campaigns that should be triggered at different points uh, of the funnel that you can start to surface when you understand how your customers interact across these different touch points. And the last one is, last impact area is uh, on the customer lifetime value. We found anywhere between 5 and 10% of improvement by uh, looking at this predictive power and trying to find what is the next best action the company can have with each and every customer, knowing that based on the uh, interaction that customers have had, it's likely that the customer is easier going to churn or it's likely that the customer might actually adopt some of the higher, higher uh, NPS channels or that customers may buy another product and use that information to trigger the right action, the right campaigns, the right interactions to the customers to deliver uh, a better, better value for, from, from that interaction. So lots of, lots of business impact. Uh, and um, when we think about the journey analytics domain specifically, the way we define it is uh, uh, it's essentially a, a, a one kind of business analytics which is specific and which uh, main goal is to look at these customer journeys uh, and to deliver better outcomes for both customers and uh, businesses. And um, 
the journey analytics domain leverages multiple techniques, multiple uh, specific uh, approaches that are around data engineering. So there's a lot of techniques around how to create, create the right data sets that are going to allow you to map the journeys, track them, and effectively predict what's going to happen. Uh, around data science, there's a, a lot of uh, tools coming from the data science field, such as uh, some machine learning techniques, uh, some sequence mining that helps you identify the patterns that are going to matter and you're going to want to influence uh, across the different journeys. And we're speaking about big data. So it's a, you know, a bank would have 1 billion interactions per year uh, and more uh, telco retailers have, um, uh, you know, retailers, e-retailers can have billions of interactions per day if you count the clicks and so on and so forth. So you're speaking about techniques that, allow, that need to harness this kind of a size of data, uh, and the good news is that there's been a lot of uh, development in the past few years. Uh, we start to leverage like deep learning uh, techniques to be able to, to harness this kind of potential uh, very successfully so. And then it also, like the toolbox of digital analytics also includes, I would say, more traditional uh, quantitative techniques like customer research, uh, customer quantitative research that helps you understand what are the drivers of the experience, <coughs> what are the... Um, areas where you can have a better impact if you innovate or if you fix some of the pain points across the journeys. Uh, some qualitative techniques, too, that helps you get more uh, granular and get more specific around some of the um, qualitative aspects related to the journeys. And then last, uh, there's a lot of um, uh, visualization techniques that help you display uh, KPIs, track KPIs, or also like just display journey maps and understand what's, what's, what's going on uh, very, very rapidly. So the journey analytics domain is, is all, these, um, all these aspects at the same time. Now, if we think, at the, um, if we think about the customer journeys at their, mo their most elemental, like their most basic uh, uh, level, uh, we like to think about journeys as starting with um, uh, a customer need or a customer wanting to perform an activity. And here in that example, we take um, an example from the financial industry customers wanting to uh, uh, wire uh, money, so transfer money from, from their account to another account. And what we see is that um, customers would have different ways to perform that journey, to go through that journey. And here we have three examples. Uh, one example, which is a customer performing that wire in a, in a mobile phone, and it's very quick. You know, one click uh, transfer is, is, um, is triggered. Uh, confirmation comes back, so it's two touch points uh, very quickly done, and the, the one is is is, uh, is wired. Second journey is a little more complicated, where you have a customer that wants to perform a wire on the web, receives an email saying that you actually cannot perform that wire because you have an overdraft. Call the call center to understand what's going on with the account. Call center agent proposes a loan or credit of some sort. Credit is approved. And then the transfer is done, email confirmed. So it's a bit of a longer journey, but a journey where you've had as a bank the opportunity to sell another product, a credit here. And then the third journey is um, uh, uh, a journey where the customers struggle. So they tr try online, go in the IVR, and are not able to find their answer, have to, 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 to touch different, different uh, touch points, call the agent, call the second agent, finally get to a branch and get their wire done. So it's a very complicated journey. And so from, an, from a journey analytics standpoint, what we're going we to look at is first we're going to map these different journeys, and then we're going to try to understand uh, what is the outcome, what is the measurable outcome of, this, of, of, of these journeys, and that's what we're going to try to uh, uh, improve. And so here uh, in these three journeys, you have very different outcomes. The first one is uh, not many touch points, not a lot of cost to deliver, uh, and uh, a high satisfaction from the customer standpoint. It was very effective, very quick. Second one is... Uh, more time, more cost, less satisfaction, not dramatic, but then uh, you sold another product. You see, you sold your, your journey generating more sales, which is, which is positive. You may be able to do it in a more effective way, in a better way for the customer, but uh, in the end, so it's a positive outcome for the company. And then the last one is um, uh, probably the worst of the three, uh, costly, low satisfaction. So you essentially have a customer that is uh, which trajectory, which micro trajectory is going downwards because they, they, they didn't get what they wanted very effectively. So uh, you, you chip away their, their, their loyalty. 
And when you think about outcome, you think about the journeys that way, you can start to have a data set you're going to try to, to, to mine and optimize uh, to, uh, to, uh, to improve the, the overall uh, delivery of, of journeys. And when we speak about outcomes of journeys, it can be things like a success or a failure. Uh, so what was the customer able to perform what he wants or he wanted to do? Satisfaction, a CSAT. Uh, risk exposure for, for the company, compliance to some processes, cost, revenues generated, brand consistency, all these factors can be thought about as outcome of each of these, every individual journey. And then when you take a step back and have this kind of data set that um, uh, go down to each and every journey, you can start thinking about um, the um, journeys you deliver for all the customers across all the steps of the lifetime value of the customer from purchasing to onboarding, paying a bill, or more of the uh, business as usual services, solving an, an issue. In that case here, in that example, so, uh, upgrading a phone um, and handling some, some specific moments in the journey. And think about optimizing any, each and every journey so that you have a better outcome and you can build on, build the value and build a relationship with the customers over time. In that example, which is a tel telecommunication example, uh, I'm sure you all have phones and all the experiences that the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the telco, the service from, from telco providers. And sometimes, well, each and every time you interact with, with a company, you feel like it's actually uh, worse than before. So you onboard, but you, it's, you struggle to do that. You have to uh, go after the store and set up your voicemail uh, with an agent. When you pay a bill, you're not sure it's confirmed, so you call back. Uh, it's you struggle to, to, to um, um, solve an issue. Upgrading your phone is uh, you need to go to the store. You wait in line. Uh, you are surprised by your bill, and so you have to, to pay more. And so your the value of these journeys are essentially going downward and are in a way destroying customer value. And the role of, of the customer journey analytics is to find these pain points and and, de and deliver better experiences across the board uh, with a toolbox that includes fixing the journey, includes adapting the journey to the customer behavior and customer needs. Sometimes doing a bit of a clean sheet redesign and transforming some aspects of the, of, the, um, of the journey. And then understanding where customers stand in their journey like uh, on a real-time basis to then influence and interact with the customers accordingly and try to make the experience better. And if you do all that better, if you're actually able to deliver that, then each and every time you interact with your customers, each and every time you deliver a journey to your customers, uh, the value you create for your customer base and yourself uh, is increasing. And so you go from a situation where uh, you, you lose value over time to a situation where you actually create value, loyalty, and repurchase uh, and margin uh, over time. Um, there's, um, broadly speaking, the three areas that we find are, um, can be delivered by journey analytics or use cases. Um, the first one is opportunity scan. So we use journey analytics techniques to find pockets of value across journeys, uh, across customer segments, uh, and, and deliver on them. Uh, two is we, um, we uh, use journey analytics to track journeys. So it's uh, on a real-time basis, understand where you're performing, where you're not performing. And um, when you are driving large programs and tra transformations of customer experience, to use that as a way to guide where you're going to focus your energy uh, and where you need to course correct, change your, your approach. And then the third aspect that we are, uh, we are applying genetics to is what we call that the dynamic management of journeys, that, that idea that uh, when you're able to understand and follow the patterns, like sequence of touch points that, that go one way or the other, that creates more or less value, uh, you can react to them and uh, help the customer solve their issues more effectively or course correct or create delight points that are going to create more value. Uh, and specifically, uh, in the opportunity scan, we usually speak about journey value assessment, which is understanding the, the, the value you can create with each and every uh, journey types. Uh, two is the journey mapping, so taking one of these journeys and mapping them to understand where you have pain points, where you have opportunities to create more value, where you have inefficiencies, digital adoption opportunities, and so on and so forth. Uh, journey drivers, which are uh, predictive drivers to help react to the journey. Behavioral segmentation, which is understanding how your customers like to interact with you, like which channel do they prefer to go through for each journey, and then tailor a bit the system around it 
to capture these preferences. That's the kind of opportunity you can, you can find. From a tracking perspective, we speak about the journey and channel performance tracking, so understanding which journeys are going well, uh, which are not, and uh, going down to the operational metrics that um, makes these uh, uh, journeys better. But also like frontline, end-to-end -end performance tracking, so uh, for an agent, for a, sh a shop rep, understanding what is the impact of their action on what's going to happen next to the customers. So um, repeat calls, uh, post store visit interactions, uh, things of that nature. Um, and then the last one is test and learn. So, so understanding when you are launching some improvements, understanding the impact that they have, uh, and um, and how you can course correct uh, to, to, uh, on, on, on the way you have designed your solution. And then last one, uh, the dynamic management is really around uh, being able to um, uh, transfer intelligence and data across your channel so that when an agent speaks to you, he, he or she knows that you've had this interaction on, on the web or in the store before and can start, can pick up the line from there. Uh, it's about um, uh, gearing up the system like an IVR, a web system, automatically so that the information that you display to the customer takes, takes into consideration the context, the last interaction that customers have had, and having behavioral triggers that allow you to uh, preempt uh, and course correct and make the experience better for, for the customer. So finding these patterns and then reacting to that. Uh, we're going to go through uh, two case examples where we apply this toolkit to uh, real situations and show how the analytics, analytics toolbox can help surface these insights and capture the, this value. The first example here is uh, really around a bank uh, which, uh, which goal is to go from uh, being the, in, the, in the bottom of the industry in terms of satisfaction and experience to the top three of, it, of the industry, and that um, started a program where they systematically go through the high-priority journeys, the one that can actually move the needle in terms of uh, improving NPS, and using these journalistics techniques together with uh, design techniques to very rapidly change the way they're interacting with, with our customers across, across, uh, across journeys. And the first thing that uh, this bank was asking uh, uh, itself, like I think anyone studying it, such as tra transformation, is where to focus and which which are uh, the journeys where uh, we should invest energy and invest resources uh, to uh, make quick improvements uh, uh, on on the overall uh, overall NPS or satisfaction of the customers. And so here, the uh, the journalistics toolbox helps you. Um, attribute some value elements to each of the journeys and prioritize the journeys based on the value at stake and based on where you can actually move the needle. And for that bank, there were two metrics. One was the uh, overall NPS, so where can I apply my energy to improve the overall satisfaction of the customers, and two was the digital adoption. How can I be more digital as a bank? And so what we did is uh, we... Um, we uh, worked with um, the bank to, to first define the journeys, and there were 13 uh, core journeys that uh, represented the, un the entire uh, set of um, uh, journeys that delivered to the, to the customers. And uh, with uh, uh, a pretty large data set and customer surveys, we were able to find the journeys that were, from a volume standpoint, the most important, and then the journeys that were, from an emotional standpoint, from an emotional engagement standpoint, more correlated with... Um, uh, the uh, overall satisfaction, so more correlated meaning the, which has the highest elasticity with, with uh, satisfaction. Uh, and one of these top journeys which we're going to look into was um, the replace card journey. So when you, you know, lo lose your card or when your card is stolen, the journey that starts with uh, notifying the bank you know, that you lost your card and that stops with your your card being in your hand, activated in your account, uh, restarted, is a journey that from a volume standpoint was not the highest, uh, was actually, I think, the top, in the top 10, but not the highest. Uh, but from an emotional standpoint, it was very important for customers. It's a, it's a moment of truth and a moment of anxiety. And so from an impact on the overall standpoint, or standpoint, was, was, was the most important one. So we focused on that. And then the, um, uh, the things we do um, is uh, we, st we start by, by trying to understand what the, this journey is about and what are the different ways customers interact with the bank to, uh, to get their card replaced. And we look at uh, different metrics to understand which channel is involved. So in, that, in the case of this journey, it was a lot around 
calls, like customers tend to call agents when, when they are uh, worried about the card. And there was a challenge to actually shift these this calls to digital. Uh, two is about the NPS, how happy are they? And we found that there were um, customers that were very happy about the process, but some others that were unhappy about it, and the, the weighted average was, uh, uh, was, um, was actually uh, so-so. Uh, and so trying to understand what are the, uh, the, the pain points for the, for the detractor and how to make the, this experience much better. And then on the left side of that chart, we can also see that there are different pathways, different ways, cu different ways customers interact with the bank to, um, to replace their card. Uh, and some of them are uh, one and done. There's no, not a lot of activity surrounding the activity, the, surrounding the card replacement. Some others show signs of anxiety and a lot of interactions happening in terms of understanding the way uh, the card might have been used and checking the statements, checking the activity uh, multiple times. Some others were also like um, shopping for a new card and using that moment to change cards, which was um, uh, a yellow light for the bank and something that they wanted to, to, be, to be ahead of. Uh, and so all these insights helps you understand it and, and frame where the opportunities are going to be. Uh, this is, uh, on that chart, another example of Johnny Map, which is um, uh, a bit richer, to, just to, to say that there are many ways to represent the journey, but in general, we try to understand the flows, uh, how customers interact across the different touch points, and from there, we start to see some patterns emerging very quickly. Uh, in that other example, which is a payment journey, uh, we can see that there are some opportunities to shift some, um, some, some calls to a more digital campaign. Uh, experience and some pain points that are that can be uh, that uh, an engagement point that can be uh, that can be delivered by, by the bank. Going back to the uh, replace card, the second thing you do is uh, you try to understand what drives the experience, what drives the satisfaction, uh, and try to do that in a mathematical way. So you look at the correlation between uh, the satisfaction that customers have for different steps and some of the drivers of these different steps with the satisfaction of the of the journeys, and that helps you. Uh, understand where to focus the efforts, and um, in our experience, there's uh, always surprises at that stage of the process. In that case, uh, our, our our bank here thought that the most important points in the process were the notification step, where customers tell you that they they lost their card or they, they, the card was stolen, uh, and was the, the when the customers receive and activate the card. And actually, that was not the case. The uh, the analysis showed that. The two most important points were rather the wait time, where customers were um, struggling and challenged because they didn't have a card, they couldn't, couldn't spend anymore with that card, uh, and so the shorter the better, and, and, um, and there was a lot of activity surrounding and checking when the card would arrive and, and, um, uh, uh, and, and you know, ways you can actually cope with that wait time. And then the second point was uh, the, what we call the re-onboarding, so when you receive your card, you have a lot of settings to restart. And that was actually a pain point for customers because they had to redo a lot of things they had already done. Uh, and it was a pain point. It was also like um, a leakage point for the bank because some of the um, automatic payments were not reinstated. And so the, the, the bank was essentially losing some spend level because, because of that. So the mathematical approach helps you focus on the areas that cannot really make a difference. And what we do is we also like benchmark. We compare the performance of the company um, with other players, competitors, and try to understand what drives the difference in, per in performance. And uh, we look at innovations on these areas that are more important to see what are the um, uh, improvements that the, the company should actually, should actually uh, um, uh, put in place. Once you've done that, usually in the process, you try to ideate, try to find uh, many ways you could uh, redesign the journey and, and make turn the pain points into delight points and make this journey a, a real moment of delight uh, overall. The issue with that, uh, you will find, is that you find a lot, a lot of ideas. So we, uh, we, uh, we, we usually find 50, 100, 150 ideas by journeys, and it's difficult to say which of these ideas should be done first, second, uh, if, you, if you don't apply um, another layer of, of analysis to um, uh, to understand what's going to be the impact of each of these ideas on the overall experience. And we have developed a set of uh, analytics techniques that take um, inspiration from marketing analysis, content analysis, to really be able to attribute the impact of each of these ideas on the overall satisfaction and on other business metrics, such as uh, digital engagement, cost reduction, to be able to really quantitatively get to the top, not the top, 60 ideas, 
but the top five programs that are going to generate most of the value uh, uh, for, for the investment you're going to make, which is very important for you guys to actually not uh, you know, waste time on, 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 on the way. And then we continue to tie uh, this impact assessment to the design itself. So we, we, um, we, we like to use drone analytics together with the more creative process of designing the solution, in that case here, uh, a, mobile, a, a mobile solution that helps customers manage their re onboarding more effectively, and really continue to tie uh, the design elements that are appearing on, the, on, this new, on this new journey with each and every um, uh, impact area so that you can continue to carry the business case of improving that journey across different functions of the organization and, and allocate the right resources to, um, to, the right, to the right initiative. And the last, in that example, um, uh, what you can use Dronatics to do uh, after the, uh, you start to launch these different improvements is, is, is the tracking, uh, tracking of the performance. And what you, what you do is you do look at correlations between uh, the performance of the journeys and different operational metrics so that you can go from uh, metrics targets to an actual tracking and a dashboard that helps you uh, say whether yay or nay, you are capturing the value you are supposed to, tr to capture, and on that basis, course correct, launch new ideas, rethink the way you, ha you are redesigning the journeys on, a, on an ongoing basis and not only, not only on a one-off basis. Net-net, this approach here, which uh, this is the end of this example, uh, can generate 20 to 35 points of NPS improvement, and the main value of the approach is to constantly be able to leverage journey analytics techniques to quantify um, uh, innovations, pain points that happen across the journeys and be able to really focus on the highest ROI opportunities so that it can gain traction very rapidly across these, uh, these different journeys. I want to go through a second example, which is a little different. It's, a, it's, a, it's another bank, actually, uh, and where you can, it's an illustration of how you can use uh, customer journey analytics to proactively interact with your customers based on the signals that they send you in, in, in the interaction. In that case, uh, the, um, the issue that the company was trying to solve is an issue we call uh, issue of silent attrition. So these are cards, like credit cards customers, that for one reason or another uh, stop using the card. They don't, um, they don't attract formally, so they don't, uh, they, don't turn, they don't terminate the card, but they stop using it, which for the bank, uh, has pretty much the same economic effect, only it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just hard for the bank to, um, to spot that, uh, that, that behavior because it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a silent attrition. So, and some customers come back to use a card and so on and so forth. So it's, it's elusive, it's hard to track, and then uh, it's also hard for the bank to, to understand uh, what's happening. And the goal of Genetic Analytics here was to find predictors that can help the bank react to what might be risk of silent attrition and avoid uh, this from happening. And for that bank, uh, the, the issue was significant, so it's, uh, it, it applied to 10 to 25 percent uh, of, the, of the, the different card products uh, and was costing them uh, $6 billion of spend uh, per, per year, which is, which is obviously significant. So what Genetics helps you do here is to first understand what are going to be the interactions, events, uh, that the customers are going through that are going to affect the risk of uh, them starting to uh, attract or silent to attract. And uh, you use different machine learning techniques to, or predictive analytics techniques to surface these events. In that, ex in that example, we started from a potential set of 2,000 and more uh, variables uh, and we landed on the 45 factors that actually matter in this problem, and they really drive uh, some, uh, some, uh, some impact on the silent attrition risk. And these factors were cutting across a wide, pretty wide array of potential events that were ranging from uh, unpleasant experiences from a customer standpoint, like uh, experiencing minor delinquency, for instance, uh, or some uh, repeat interactions were another one. Uh, but it was inc also included life events, customer Moving, for instance, from one place to another uh, was also including some competitive activities, including some uh, engagement, digital engagement, card use, that uh, credit line use, and so on and so forth. And so we were able to land on these 45 events, which individually were not enough 
uh, signals that were in, important enough to drive to a reaction, so to an action from the bank. But then when you started to look at these 45 events together in a journey and as a sequence of events happening to a given customer, you could start to see some interesting pattern that at some point the bank had to take care of, that at some point the risk of uh, a customer attriting was getting significantly, significant enough for the bank to react to it because the risk was materializing and the cost of reacting was, um, was, uh, was, uh, was relevant from an economic standpoint. And so um, to get to these journeys, so these combination events, that's where we start to use some of these machine learning um, uh, sequence mining techniques to be able to find what we call the corridors of risk, so the different sequence of events that lead to a higher risk and that should trigger a reaction. And the second thing that um, by doing that you are able to find is that there's thematic corridors of risk. So that's not only the sequence of events gets you to a higher probability of, of, um, of uh, attriting, but it also tells you the kind of action you can take based on the type of um, experience that customers are going through. And we identify, as an example here, corridors of risk which were more uh, competitive related. So we find that there were a set of interactions, uh, so credit inquiries, uh, some drop in the, in the spend of, um, of the card, uh, erratic spend patterns that were suggesting that the customers were uh, potentially taking another card and that you, you should actually act with the, with the customers with alternative products, incentives, reward points to get the customer back. Some of the corridors were related to the, the experience itself and customers going through painful experience and they start to use less the card. Some were related to um, uh, uh, an onboarding for a new product that was failed uh, and that generated satisfaction very early on in the, in the, um, in the, uh, in the life cycle of the customer. So a lot of very tangible set of actions that, ca that the bank could, uh, could take to, uh, to mitigate the risk of satisfaction. So in that other example, uh, we can use journal analytics to understand what's going to be the likely outcome of the same interaction and react to it. And uh, we took an example of silent attrition, but there's a lot of other uh, aspects that you can, you can influence with a good journal analytics um, approach. Uh, we've done work in a digital engagement, so how to um, uh, nudge customers to higher leverage of the digital channels, uh, experience predictors, so how can we... Uh, derive what's going to be the NPS of a customer based on their interaction and correct for that, and so on and so forth. Cross sell is another one. Um, now I'm going to go through. Um, I'm going to take a step back and, and go through how do you, how can you build a drone analytics capability uh, in the most effective way. And uh, this is uh, leveraging our our experience, my own personal experience of working with about 30 organizations and looking at them uh, and successfully building these journalics uh, teams and capabilities. And I have to say that there are, um, uh, there are a few challenges that are related to the, uh, to the uh, journalics capability itself. Uh, there are three of them. The first one is uh, the data. Um, we're speaking about, as I was saying, big data. So we're speaking about um, uh, hundreds of millions, billions, billions of interaction, uh, many different data sources that are usually scattered in the organization and that are, that are not uh, coded the same way, so it's actually hard to find one customer across your call center and at the same time find the same customer in your uh, digital logs and find the same customer on the point of sale and transaction, CRM, what have you. Uh, and so being able to um, take that data together and analyze them in a way that is effective is, is one of the challenges that uh, you need to solve for when you build a, a journalistic capability. The second one is, uh, the ability to generate insights, uh, and insights are going to help you really improve the business. Uh, and I would say that here, the challenge specific to that is uh, it's very easy to be lost in the details uh, because it's, it's, it's many interactions, many journeys, and I've seen a lot of teams like uh, just lose the thread. Uh, um, uh, and two, it's also like very easy to be uh, uh, backward looking as opposed to forward looking, really thinking only about fixing the journeys the way they are today as opposed to innovating and trying to create new journeys that are going to solve the problem more effectively. Usually, the impact is uh, a third to 40% uh, in fixing, and is it 30 to 60% uh, in actually innovating and creating something new that is, that is not there. And you, 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 need, you do need different analytics techniques to actually be able to get there. And the third one, the third challenge is a challenge that is very inherent to improving customer journeys, which is a challenge having to work with 
many stakeholders uh, and many, many uh, silos in the organization, for lack of, lack of a better word. Usually, the responsibility of managing uh, the point of sale, the network, the marketing, uh, the digital channels, the, uh, the call center are under different or can be under different uh, scopes of responsibilities. Uh, and you need to be able to work across these this different functions to be able to have impact. And so that's one of the challenges that our journalistic capabilities have to, have to, um, have to face and, and tackle with. We've seen um, um, uh, five key elements that, that are requirements and um, that need to be in place to have a successful journalistic capability. Very quickly, the first one is, uh, it may seem obvious, but it's uh, business ownership and um, being able to um, align the different stakeholders ar ar around the concept of customer journalism and align the stakeholders around the, the value of journal analytics is extremely important and having the right budgets, uh, the right investments uh, to be able to not only analyze the journalism but then execu execute on these improvements through agile development, through um, network changes and so on and so forth is it, it, critical. Otherwise, it, you, know, you just can't really move forward. Uh, the second and the third one is around um, the data and the tools that you need to use to, um, uh, to be able to analyze, mine, find the patterns uh, across this, uh, this, 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 um, this journey. So I'm going to speak a little more about these two elements, but these are very important. This is a new domain altogether, and it requires specific tools, specific data uh, to be able to find, to, to find the, 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 the nuggets. Uh, Talent, talent and mindset, I would say. Um, so having a team that are what I call analytics entrepreneurs that are, that are able to leverage a very, um, um, a, a very advanced toolkit. Um, so um, that's, you know, it's not your Excel, it's not your Access, it's actually, S, you know, SQL, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's some, uh, you know, it's R, it's some machine learning techniques, but also like people that are creative enough and can uh, explore new areas and understand how to apply these very technical aspects to the business itself and end up uh, doing simple things, changing a white page, uh, redesigning customer experience is, is, is critical. So this combination of uh, right side of the brain and left side of the brain and being entrepreneurs is, is critical for, for these capabilities to succeed. And the last one is um, the process itself and being able to uh, 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 go through this improvement in sprints uh, tailor the right analytics approach, uh, coach uh, the, uh, the different teams to, uh, to move forward and be action driven uh, is the last element so that you don't do you know, science projects but really things that are going are gonna to move the needle in, in the business. Uh, data perspective, as I said, uh, we, we, uh, we like to use um, multiple set of data that are going to be very complementary in terms of uh, providing you with the right insights on the on the experience. So we use customer research, uh, quality quality. We use a lot of interaction data, obviously, that come across calls, uh, web, mobile, marketing data, point of sale, transactions. Uh, so financial, non-financial transactions that together are going to represent the actual journeys customers going through. Operational metrics, cost, the financials, the drivers of customer experience, and then we also look at from a fact-based perspective what others are doing, like what competitors are doing, but also more importantly, uh, what the best in class across industries, the Amazon, the Uber of this world, uh, are doing to, to deliver better experience and take inspiration from that. Then from a tool perspective, uh, we work a lot with, uh, with ClickFox, which is a, a big data platform that is allowing you to uh, take data from different data silos uh, and connect it, transform it and connect it, adding the intelligence in a way that delivers uh, a journey piece of data that can be analyzed effectively by many different analysts uh, and track journeys and uh, uh, find patterns in a real-time basis so that you can influence the journeys on a real-time basis. Uh, very, very powerful platform. There's other techniques, but uh, we, we, we like to work with these guys. It helps accelerate a lot of the, um, of the, uh, of the uh, power of these uh, drone analytics uh, efforts. Uh, how to get started? Uh, there are... Um, there's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no good or bad way to start. I would say that the, um, uh, uh, the best way we've seen companies start is to start with one area and really uh, uh, not necessarily invest millions into developing the capability, but start with what they have. So not a large team, not a lot of tools at the beginning, but focusing on one or two journeys that are going to drive value and then uh, starting to map, understand better these journeys and um, develop then a business case around 
improving these different high value journeys to be able to then fund, learn, and develop the, um, uh, the right capabilities uh, going forward. Thank you. And if you, uh, if you have any question, uh, don't hesitate to connect directly with me. I gave my, uh, my email address uh, up front in this presentation. Uh, or you can find me on LinkedIn. I will, we will be very happy to, to start a dialogue with you on, on this topic. Thanks, Max Hans. That was awesome. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. Tune in for the rest of Experience Week for more great content.